Hi guys, it's Sophie. So, I'm going to be chatting through the last three books that are on the Women's Prize that I've not already talked to you about. Um, I'm pretty sure these are all of the ones that are on there. Have I missed any? Give me one moment. Ah yes, there is one more because I listened to an audiobook, so let's chat through that one quickly first. It, it was Nothing But Blue Sky by Kathleen McMahon, and I don't think I talked about this one before because I hadn't quite finished it yet. Um, in brief, it is a story about grief. It's about a man who has lost his wife and how he's coping with the world. Um, she dies in a plane crash, so it's like a relatively like freak accident. And he used to be a journalist who covered things like plane crashes. He used to really like plane crashes, like as a story. And it's a very quiet little story about his life. I mean, I think I valued the fact that I felt like she did the concept of like a male narrator really well um, and it felt very masculine throughout um, but it wasn't one of my favourites. Um, I listened to it and enjoyed the process of listening to it but it wasn't one I think would stay in my life or I'd buy a book of in future. Um, however, I did like all three of the ones I have below. So if I start with Summer by Ali Smith. Um, I read Autumn, that's the only other one of the quartet I've read, um, and I actually preferred this one to Autumn, I think lots of people really loved Autumn, and as I say I've not read Winter or Spring, um, but she weaves in small elements of Covid really well into this without it feeling overwhelming or traumatic in a way, I don't know whether that's the right word, but like I think a lot of Covid has felt really traumatic and the way that it's woven in in terms of like starting to wear masks and little things on the news and little changes to the way they live recognises it in a way that feels um, appropriate I suppose to be releasing something so soon after whilst it's still happening but you know what I mean so soon after it began um, this story like kind of splits in two follows um, a man who is reminiscing in his time in um, I think World War II and a young family with a very strange little boy um, who is obsessed with Albert Einstein. Um, my favourite part of these books is definitely the capturing of the place. I'm actually less worried about the general storyline, though I prefer the old man's to the boys. The boys scared me. Um, like, just like I didn't trust him, someone was afoot. Um, but yeah, I, I enjoyed this more perhaps than I thought I was going to and I felt like Covid was quite safe in her hands in a way which I hadn't expected to feel quite so soon um, but I think it was the gentleness and the the fact that wasn't what the story was about it was a part of the time they were living in um, so that is Summer by Ali Smith then the next one that I have is Unsettled Ground by Claire Fuller one of the best covers on a book that I've seen in a little while um, and this follows a pair of siblings who are in their 50s who live in quite a run-down um, sort of cottage in on the land of a large estate um, which is owned by quite a wealthy man um, and the mother dies very early into the book leaving the two siblings to fend for themselves um, it's really a story of rural poverty which I think is interesting and needed um, to show the different ways that living without anything can affect people in different places in the UK and I did enjoy reading it I think lots of people have had sort of mixed reviews I would say on this one um, and I've heard a couple actually like upright negative reviews of it but I think the fact that I kind of in the late half of the books the kind of poverty that they're living in I see that quite a lot when I'm out about in the world where we are that's more familiar to me than tower blocks or people sitting in the street um, and I just thought that was an important thing to be kind of discussed and talked about um, I don't think it's particularly literary but I don't think that particularly matters given that it's not a literary prize um, but just so you know I feel like it reads more like straight fiction um, and it's difficult to know who to recommend it to you. I think it's probably from that description you'll choose if that's something you're interested in or not, but I did I did like it, I did like the process of reading it. The next one I adored, no one is talking about this by Patricia Lockwood. 
I got this. So I've heard a few people saying like, the first half of the book is told in tweets. And I heard a lot of people being like, what was going on? I was trying to understand it. I am clearly on Twitter too much because I opened it and immediately knew what was happening for all of it. And like, I knew which tweet she was talking about. Some of them, some of the tweets are about specific real life tweets. And I was like, oh yeah, I knew that. Um, and it reminded me a little bit of um, Reply All with the problematic bits with that podcast, but Reply All when they do the like, internet like tweet and someone has to like deduce what's going on i felt like i could just read it and understand it and that was very satisfying but it also felt like a lot of the way i live in my spare time like not that i'm on twitter constantly but i think like especially in work evenings i can spend way too much time scrolling and um it felt like it was just in my head in that social media adult before sleep space um the book does have an actual plot, it's not just tweets, um, and it, the kind of plot I would describe as someone who is very online, um, having external factors in their life make them remove themselves from the online world and see a little bit of the futility of that constant movement that we can trap ourselves within. Um, I thought it was so like present and con really contemporary, like contemporary down to like the year, um, and I really, really want to read pre-study, um, which I had on my, like, vaguely had on my radar, but never, like, added to a wish list or bought. Um, but I think this was, like, a little bit special. I really love this book. So it's just these three. There's not too many more to show you. I mean, I've got, I've got nothing but Blue Sky here. Um, but because there are only, like, so many books on the list and I reviewed so many last time, this is all I have um, to talk about. Um, but yeah, we're going to do the same as I did in the Jalak Prize video and just talk about the shortlist and I'll choose my personal winner from the shortlist, like which of the shortlists I would be most happy if it won. So the shortlist is The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett, Piranesi by Susanna Clark, Unsettled Ground by Claire Fuller, Transcendent Kingdom by Yar Jassy, How the One-Armed Sister Sweeps the House uh, by Cherry Jones and No One Is Talking About This by Patricia Lockwood. Um, I was a bit surprised to see how the one-armed sister sweeps a house on there um, but as I said I didn't feel like I gave that book my all really I found it really challenging to listen to um, the others I think are all really good books like I feel like I could e equally recommend any of them to different categories of people or different like people with different interests but I think if I had to choose an outright what was my favorite book do you know, I found myself really torn between Piranesi and no one is talking about this. Um, I think I'm going to like caveat this. So I think if I was trying to recommend a book, I would recommend Piranesi to you guys above no one is talking about this. If I was trying to go for like broadest appeal, I think an awful lot of people will love Piranesi. I think it's a really fun book. I've convinced Tom to read it and he's like a third of the way through. But my personal favourite I think as no one is talking about this. I read it in one go, I, I mean it's not that long, it's um, what is it, 200 pages, but I literally just sat down and read it in one go with a cup of tea and didn't fall asleep until it was done and I love I love books like that, That that's one of the greatest joys of, of reading is sitting down and not being able to get back up till the book is done. Um, yeah, I would say I've had a mixed time with the Women's Prize. I've certainly enjoyed the reading for the Jalak Prize more, but I'm glad that there are a couple in there that I have picked out um, and have had the chance to read. And I think, like, Do Transition Baby I'd read already, but the Ya Jesse, no one is talking about this, and Piranesi, I probably wouldn't have picked up without the prize. So I'm thankful for the prize for that. Um, but this is my first year reading the whole long list. And I don't think it's something I would do again. <laughs> um, not because I haven't enjoyed it, but because I think I have other prizes where I've enjoyed more. So the Jalak Prize is definitely one I want to do again. And the Man Booker International so far this year, every book I've read has had five stars. That is a roll. Um, whereas the Women's Prize, there were more threes than there were fours and fives. So it's probably just not quite the right prize for me. It's a little bit about that. Um, but there are some I would really recommend from it. Um, yeah, I think that's probably my summary. This is the one I'm going to root for, um, but crowd favourite is Piranesi, and I think Piranesi is more likely to win. So there you go. That are my thoughts on the Women's Prize 2021. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's a little bit short just because I've reviewed quite a few of them in the last video, 
But yeah, I'll see you guys again soon in my next video and look after yourselves. Until then, bye!